I have to ask you first about what Vivek Ramaswamy said. He went after you personally. He did. Last November, Vivek Ramaswamy absolutely dismantled Ronna McDaniel, the chairwoman of the Republic National Committee. While on the debate stage, he asked for her resignation, and she is now stepping down from that position. And it all traces back to this clip. Let's speak the truth. I mean, since Ronna McDaniel took over as chairwoman of the RNC in 2017, we have lost 2018, 2020, 2022, no red wave that never came. We got trounced last night in 2023. And I think that we have to have accountability in our party. For that matter, Ron, if you want to come on stage tonight, you want to look the GOP voters in the eye and tell them you resign, I will turn over my yield my time to you. And frankly, look, the people there are cheering for losing in the Republican Party. Think about who's moderating this debate. This should be Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and Elon Musk. We'd have 10 times the viewership asking questions that GOP primary voters actually care about and bringing more people into our party. You think the Democrats, and we've got Christian Welker here, you think the Democrats would actually hire Greg Gutfeld to host a Democratic debate? They wouldn't do it. And so the fact of the matter is, I mean, Christian, I'm going to use this time because this is actually about you in the media and the corrupt media establishment. Ask you the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up disinformation? Answer the question. Go. Mr. Robert. This is how we get our country back. We need accountability because this media rigged the 2016 election. They rigged the 2020 election with the Hunter Biden laptop story. Mr. Ramaswamy, and they're going to rig this election. Your time is up. Accountability. Let me turn to That's Governor, Governor Christie. Why are you... Gosh, what a brutal tone. Vivek made huge headlines that November night by saying that the Republican Party was the party of losers. All of it was thanks to two people. The first is Ronald McDaniel, who we'll get to in a minute. The second is Kristen Welker, the journalist for ABC Network, who played a huge role in spreading the Trump-Russia collusion. It was a big deal because what he said was what everyone was thinking. Why were the Democrats hosting a Republican debate? Since that responsibility fell on Ronald McDaniel's shoulders, he called her out. While it is nice to have camaraderie between the two parties, this is a big no-no. By letting the Democrats run the debate, you're essentially letting them control the narrative. This mishap fell squarely on Ronna's shoulders. I'm just glad Vivek decided to speak up. I have to say, this is what made us all love Vivek Ramaswamy. He isn't afraid to speak the uncomfortable truth and does so with such surgical precision. He has a deeper understanding of the issues that most politicians don't, and he gets down to the second, third, and fourth order thinking that makes for a strong leader. I'm sure a large majority of the people in the United States had no clue who Ron Daniel was before this debate, or even what the RNC chair was. Heck, you still might not even know. While the chair of the Republic National Committee is not the most important role out there, it is considered a leadership role and highly visible. In layman terms, the chair is responsible for raising money and building much of the infrastructure for the general election campaign. Soon after Vivek called her out, she would go on Fox News to defend herself. Let's roll the clip. Why should you retain your job given the track record of the party under your leadership. And to that, what do you say? Well, first, I'm going to continue to focus on Joe Biden and Democrats. And I think there was a moment missed la during that debate by Vivek to talk about the fact that we still have 13 American host hostages in Israel, the fact that for the first time ever in the history of either party, we had a Jewish co-sponsor for a debate, and we are in very perilous times in our country. You can tell the Fox News anchor did not really hold back on Rana. The worst part is that Rana completely dodges the question, which is just terrible politics. You know, in situations like these, if you want to be perceived as a strong leader, you take the criticism head on, you address the issue, even if it's uncomfortable. The first step in situations like these is to take accountability for the losses. Then and only then do you address what you're doing to work on the now. McDaniel just totally skips over the rebuttal portion and just dives straight into total nonsense. This is what is wrong with politics today. Quite frankly, no one is interested because the majority of these politicians do not know how to have a constructive debate. They're constantly sidestepping the problem and give indirect answers. In turn, people have become overwhelmingly skeptical of the political system. This has been the general trend in politics. Unfortunately for Ronna McDaniel, she's another classic example of someone who has done a poor job for the Republican Party. She has stacked up losses and it shows. This all boils down to accountability. It's like a head coach of the NFL losing for seven straight seasons. She has had more than enough time to turn things around, yet has nothing to show for it. As a Republican Party, why would you continue to have someone in a position that is doing a horrible job? The Republican Party has been too complacent watching the start of the show, Donald Trump. He's been backpacking the party for so long that I think that it has allowed the rest of the party to relax, maybe a little too much. 
The thing is that the party needs someone else to step up to the plate, someone to go in the spotlight and make waves. I mean, Trump won't be president forever if elected again, and someone else has to carry the torch. In the previous clip, Ronna McDaniel never actually makes her point when answering why she should retain her position. She ends up taking so long to address the question that Fox has to cut her off. Instead, McDaniel ends up just word vomiting a bunch of irrelevant information about how they hosted the first Jewish co-sponsor, by uniting the party with the Democrats, and focusing on Joe Biden. The messaging just reeked of weak sauce. Why should the Republican Party be focusing on the other side of the aisle? How about we look within first and see what we can control? Biden is going to do what he's going to do. The Democrats are going to do what they're going to do. And I think this mindset is part of the reason the Republican Party has been losing since 2018. The defensive mindset does not make for a very good strategy in politics. The name of the game is to go on the offense and bring a fresh new perspective. New ideas that can reinvigorate the party. Donald Trump has done that well, so has Vivek. There's a reason that voter turnout continues to decrease every year. It's not just Republicans. Both sides of the aisle have been really disconnected with the general public, and that's why everyone feels so hopeless about politics. The sad part is that she was actually re-elected as chairwoman this past January by the Republican Party, which shows that the party still needs to trim some fat. The amount of fundraising this year was at 10-year lows, which was one of her main criticisms. I mean, with inflation, we can just say her fundraising was half of what it was 10 years ago. Considering a big portion of this position is to fundraise for the party, there really is no reason for her to stick around any longer. To be honest, I kind of wonder if she let NBC host the debate because they were so low on fundraising. But anyways, let's move on to the more interesting part. There are rumors that Vivek could be a candidate to replace Ronda McDaniel as chair of the Republic National Committee. Honestly, I love this idea. I can't think of someone who has been so impactful in such a short time in politics as Vivek. The only other person I can think of is Donald Trump, but we must remember that Trump was already in the spotlight for decades before running for president. Vivek has developed one of the most prestigious personal brands in such a short period of time, which has been unprecedented in politics. Maybe the only one I can think of is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, but I hate even mentioning her name in the same sentence because they are drastically different. Vivek could teach a masterclass on how to run a campaign, and so I think we could see how this would be a good fit. This would not be his first rodeo on raising funds. He has spent his whole life as a serial entrepreneur, coming just shy of a billionaire when he announced his presidential campaign. I mean, let's take a look at his accolades. He was a partner in a hedge fund overseeing their biotech portfolio. He started his own biotech company, raising over $100 million from investors, and even wrote his own books. These are accomplishments that typically take a lifetime. His extensive experience would make the RNC chair right up his alley. And while I love the idea of Vivek being in the leadership role, it is still a long shot. Reports show the position is reserved for Michael Watley, who serves as the chairman of the North Carolina Republican Party. I think most of us see a position open up in the Republican Party and automatically wonder what it would be like to have someone like Vivek in that position. Don't get me wrong, he would do well wherever he ends up. If only there were multiple Viveks to clean up the country. It has been a complete disaster for the Republican Party the last seven years, and it can be attributed to the lack of leadership. If you think about the past election cycles, there are not many names that pop off the page in the Republican Party. In today's politics, the personal brand matters more than ever. It hasn't felt like we've had those strong personalities that can step into the limelight and shine bright. But I will say there appears to be light at the end of the tunnel. Carrie Lake, Ron DeSantis, Tulsi Gabbard have been able to make a buzz promoting their own personal brand. It's just the name of the game. Those who step up to the plate and can deliver the message that resonates with people are the ones elected. What is for sure is that the Republican Party has been a clown show. I'm sorry, but Ronna McDaniel was just another one of the issues. She was often too busy pushing diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is a tenet that has belonged to the left for a long time. It was one of those things where it appeared that she realized she couldn't beat them, so she decided to join them. I really do thank Vivek for calling out Ronna McDaniel because the way this clown show was going, it started to look like Ronald McDonald was leading the Republican Party. It takes someone speaking up about the uncomfortable truths for change to happen. Vivek did just that. While I don't think Ronald McDaniel should be completely removed from the party, I just don't think the role of RNC chair was meant for her. Quite simply, she wasn't ready for the leadership role, and I mean, come on, it took seven years of failure to finally step down, and it's not completely her fault. She was elected into that position four straight times, which tells me that the Republican National Committee is still lacking real leadership throughout. And so I guess it's all true. The Republican Party has become the party of losers, but I think Vivek saying it like it was, was direly needed. There needs to be some type of reform within the Republican Party, and Ronna McDaniel stepping down from her role as RNC chair is a big part of that. The Republican Party, also dubbed the Grand Old Party, often upholds the status quo for a little too long. But there appears to be a new wave of values that is being ushered into the party. 
I mean, even historically loyal Democratic voting blocs, such as Latinos, Blacks, and even Young Gen Zs, are starting to shift red. I think a lot of that can be attributed to Vivek. The way he jumped onto the scene really made people stop and listen. He has an innate ability to resonate with many independents. And while he likely won't be the RNC chair, I'm excited to see where he ends up. Last but not least, if you made it to the end of the segment, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Your engagement is greatly appreciated. And until next time.